Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to create a small Unity game that has some sound in it. And that will involve having a, a character that we can move around on the screen. And then hear objects within that world that have sound sources attached to them. Those are called audio sources. So you'll receive a link that allows you to download a template. And that template comes in a zip file, which you'll need to unzip. I'm going to unzip it right to my desktop here. This is where I downloaded it. And within that folder, there'll be a Unity project. And a Unity project contains a variety of different folders. The ones that we tend to work most within is the Assets folder here. So let's open that up. And how do we open that up? Well, we go to the Unity Hub. So I'm going to open up the Unity Hub. I could go to my Applications folder and do it. I use the Spotlight to open it up. Then I'm going to ignore this little message here, uh, which means that ScreenFlow is not recording the audio from Unity Hub, and that's okay for right now. Okay, I'm going to choose the Open icon from the Projects menu, and I'm going to go to my desktop where I just unzip that package. I'm going to select the folder. That's all I need to do, and then I hit Open. That's going to open this project for me. If I have multiple versions of Unity on my machine, it might ask me what version that I want to that I want to open this project in, and I'm going to choose this current version here, 2019.1.0. It may be different for the current class that you're taking. It should should be specified in the assignment. So I'm going to open that up. It may take a minute or two for the project to completely load into Unity. And once it does, we'll get started. I can look at my dock and I see that Unity is in my dock and it's, it's starting to load. Also over here, uh, the Unity Hub is open too. Both of them are kind of working in combination with one another. You can see that if it's the first time I'm opening this project on a machine, it takes a little bit longer and it has to kind of analyze the assets within the project and import that into, uh, into Unity. Once it does that, it becomes a little faster for you to open projects afterwards. So we're just going to let the, the uh, Unity do its thing here, and it takes about a minute for it to complete. Okay. Now, what I usually like to do first is I like to go up to the window menu and choose Layouts, Default Layout. Uh, I think that's the best way to sort of get started. Now, Unity works in scenes. Uh, a scene is kind of like a... Uh, a level in a game like level one or level two and in the project tab down below you'll see default scene and what we can do is double click the default scene and then we can see our first scene here I can zoom out by using the scroll wheel or on my trackpad on my laptop I can use sort of two fingers to zoom out of the scene so I'm kind of looking at the scene and right now it's got a monolith in it, and it has a first-person controller and a directional light, a plane to walk around on, and a monolith. These are all the things in the scene over here. And if I hit the play button here, it will actually, it will actually allow me to play this little scene. And right now the way that the scene is set up is that I have this sort of main camera, and it allows me to move around using keys on my keyboard. So it's almost ready, and as soon as it re is ready, then it, I can hear some footstep sounds. And I can look around using my mouse. I can sort of look around in the game, and then I can use different keys to move around. So I can use the arrow keys to move uh, forward and back or left and right. And I can also use, if you're a, a game player, you'll probably know this, you can use the A and D keys to move back and forth, and the W and S keys to move forward and back. You can use the space bar to jump, like that, and we can move around the world. 
uh, shift will allow you to like run while you're holding those arrow keys. Uh, and that's basically our game as it is right now. There's not much to it. And all we're going to do is put in some additional objects to uh, be our speakers within the world. So uh, to get our cursor back, to get our mouse cursor back, you might have to hit escape and then you can hit the play button. Another way to do the play button is to hit um, on a Mac command P on a PC it would be control P which allows you to go in and out of play mode. So we're gonna look at our scene here and we're gonna add a few things. We're gonna add two objects. So let's go up to the game object menu and let's create a three object. Let's create a sphere first. A sphere is a kind of a, um, a circle and we're gonna move that circle kind of off to the uh, right of the monolith. I'm kind of looking at the monolith from the other side. Our first person controller, if we look at that, is actually facing towards the monolith when we start. We can move the first person character around if we want. But over here, I can actually double click on the sphere and get really close to it. I can make it bigger by changing the scale. So if I change this to 2, 2, and 2, um, it's a little bigger. Uh, so I, I have this sphere here. Now, if we want to add audio to the sphere, what we can do is we can select the sphere from our hierarchy. We're seeing it in the inspector, and we're going to add a specific component. We can add additional functionality to this sphere, and one of the things we can add is what's called an audio source. So if we hit Add Component, what we can do is type in audio and it will show us some of the audio components that we can add to this object. We're going to add what's called an audio source like that and now we have an audio source. The audio source itself is kind of like a speaker within the world and allows us to attach an audio clip to our audio source. Now it has some other features like play on awake and loop uh, which we're going to get into a minute. What we're going to do next is we need to find an audio file that exists somewhere on our uh, on your own personal hard disk. So I'm going to pause the video and find one really quickly and then I'll come back in just a second. So I'm now on my finder window here and I have two WAV files. I have two themes essentially on my desktop that I've copied here. And there are two ways to bring them into my Unity project. If I have my Unity project open like this, I can sort of make this window smaller and I can literally drag and drop these into the project. Now it's going to drag and drop it's into the what's called assets folder and that assets folder exists within my Unity project inside assets. So I can kind of see that here. So when I do that, I could also drag them into assets. So when I do it both ways, First, then I'll drag the um, uh, I'll drag theme A into the assets folder, and what you'll see is that in Unity, what it will do is it will sort of analyze and say, "Oh, you you placed a file in here. Let me decode that file." And so I get uh, a little spinning ball for a little bit until it kind of decodes the file and says, "Oh, great! I got an audio file here." The other way to do it is just to drop the theme or drop the sound file into the assets here and it will copy and convert it um, into uh, the Unity format that it needs. It's actually converting it to a specific type of file. Uh, you can inspect the file by clicking on the theme itself and over in the inspector it will tell you, oh, what's it doing? It's actually compressing it down to a Vorbis file. A Vorbis file is a little bit like an MP3 and it's compressing it at 100% quality. Uh, uh, and so you can see that imported size uh, and then also the original size. And it's actually compressing it down to make it smaller so that your game is smaller when you actually release it. Okay, so I have those two project, two files in my assets folder. And now what I can do is go over to my uh, sphere here. I can select it up here, select it on the, game, on the scene itself. And I can go to my audio source. And now where it says audio clip, I can select that in my world. I can select that using this little button that looks like a circle. 
and it brings up all the audio files as part of my project and I'm going to select theme A. And it's already set to play on awake, which means that if I play the game, it will play the file. So it will be playing off a speaker that basically exists on that sphere. So I'm going to kind of play my game, and I should hear sound at this point. It's kind of packaging up my game. We wait a little bit longer. Okay, and it's playing, and it's playing on that object, and I, the object's way up in the air up there, which I didn't notice before. And now I can drop out of play. And two things, I'm going to sort of drop it down so it's closer to the world here, kind of move it off to the side. Now, right now, it's a 2D sound. It's acting like underscore or extra diegetic music. Um, but I can change it to be a 3D sound. So I'm going to change it. You can see on the audio source, that's a selection. So an audio source is a speaker in the world, and I can change it to 3D here. So I can go from 2D to 3D. Now what it will do is it will give me perspective in the world. So when I hit play, uh, it's going to do a couple things. A, it's going to pan it dynamically based on my listener position, but also it's going to, you can see that um, I walked up to it, it became louder, and as I walk away, it, it falls off. And also, it has some Doppler shift on it, which sounds really weird. Doppler shift is um, similar to like when you come up to um, like a train crossing and the train goes by and the train uh, uh, pitches down as it goes past you. Um, that's Doppler shift. And you actually can get rid of the Doppler shift by opening up the 3D sound settings and turning the Doppler level down to zero, uh, which I prefer. Um, if you have racing cars in your game, then you probably want Doppler shift. But if you just have music, you probably don't need any Doppler shift. You can also see that we can change the roll-off of how the sound dissipates over distance. Uh, right now, it's a logarithmic roll-off, but you can change it to linear so it's a little uh, smoother. This is less like real life. It's actually, in real life, it's more like a logarithmic curve. But if I now go up to it, I can hear it. And then if I pan left and right, you can hear it sort of pan back and left and right. Now if I keep, if I run away from it, and even fall off the, um, uh, fall off the, uh, the plane, it's going to start dissipating over time and getting quieter and quieter and quieter. And so it basically has this, uh, uh, it's, it's being spatialized within the world. I'm going to go ahead and change it back to a logarithmic roll-off. And then create another object to do it once again. So I'm on the other side of my monolith, what I'll do is create a cube from the game object menu over here. Sort of put it and kind of adjust this to make sure that it's sitting more on the plane, just like that. And then um, similarly, I'm going to add another component. I'm going to create an audio source. So I can type in audio and see audio source here. And then I'm going to pick a different audio clip for this one. I'm going to pick theme two or theme B. And I'm going to save because I haven't saved in a while. Um, and I'm saving this default scene here. I can see the name of the scene up here. And now, uh, I also want to make this 3D as well and turn off Doppler. So I'll turn off the Doppler and make this a 3D sound. Hit save. And lastly, I'm just going to check. I'm going to go back and forth between these two objects. So over on one side, I'll have the sphere. And on the other side, I'll have the cube. The first time I run it, it kind of has to package that new audio into the gameplay, which is why I'm getting the spinning ball. I also haven't restarted my machine in a while, which is why I'm probably getting some slow, slow stuff happening. All right. So if I move over to here, I'm going to hear this theme in the world. It's also being spatialized, so I can move kind of left and right and hear it. And then when I go over to this one, that one's going to fade out. 
and then I hear this one instead. I can kind of hear the other one in the background, so I may want to move those further apart, but that's how you put, you know, speakers in the world, and you can hear them. Uh, and, and this one has two speakers kind of in the world, and I can change the roll off so it rolls off more quickly, uh, or change the maximum distance. So if I change the maximum distance to say 10, like that, for each one of our audio sources, that means when I get farther than say 10 meters away, then uh, I will cease to hear the sound. So now it will be completely silent until I reach a certain point and then it will start fading in. So this is my first theme and my second theme. As soon as I get far enough away, uh, in fact, I still can sort of hear it. So maybe I need to go to five meters instead of 10 to get those to roll off kind of correctly. Um, so you can mess around with that. And my wife just said she loves me, which is really awesome. And uh, so lastly, what you need to do, um, turn off notifications. <laughs> and uh, lastly, what you need to do is once you save and quit out of Unity, then you can zip up this entire project if you want and you can post it if you want me to take a look at it. So you can compress that. And what it will do is, I have the first version here, it's gonna create a version two here, uh, and it will compress that, and then I can upload it as the project. So let me know if you have any questions. And that's a little bit about how audio works inside of Unity.